someone gave you 40 chances to accomplish your goals in life, what would you do? That is a question that Howard G. Buffett, son of billionaire investor Warren Buffett, asked in his new book. It's called 40 Chances, Finding Hope in a Hungry World. And Howard is here along with his dad and his son, Howard W. Buffett, or HWB, as we're going to be calling you throughout the interview. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Well, I can't wait to talk about the book, but I may not have 40 chances to talk to Mr. <laughs> Buffett, so i got to ask you a little politics first. You said about this recent debt ceiling crisis, it was like using a political weapon of mass destruction. Exactly. We avoided it at the 11th hour, but do you think real damage was done? Well, not much damage was done, but we came close to doing uh, irreparable damage, and, and that's why I call it a political weapon of mass destruction. It should not be used. Uh, uh, you know, we're not, we're not using poison gas, we don't use the nuclear bomb, even when we don't get our way. So. This, it should be it, it should be taken off the table. And as a businessman, what do you think of the new health care rollout and the problems with the website? Well, I, I would have hated to have had that job myself, but it, it'll get solved. Well, let me just turn to you, Howard. You've written this book, 40 Chances, and it's really a series of vignettes. And the idea, I suppose, is really to inspire people. Tell me about it, because I understand this concept has its roots in farming, and you are a farmer. Well, yeah, I, I learned a long time ago uh, that you know, a farmer gets about 40 seasons, 40 crops, and when I started thinking about it that way, it kind of changed my thinking both about farming and life. I mean, 40 chance is really kind of a mindset that we have 40 opportunities. You know, once you get through school and you get a little experience, you really get about 40 opportunities, 40 years to accomplish your goals. And uh, I, you know, I kid that I've probably already wasted at least 10 or 20. Right? <laughs> so I'm starting behind the curve. But uh, it's a mindset. It's an urgency. It's it's believing that that uh, we don't have all the time in the world to do the things that we need to do and we need to get it done. It simultaneously sounds like a lot of time and not enough time. Yeah. You went out, you wrote this book, it's 40 different stories and it's also very much complemented by your own photographs. Is it supposed to be a call to action? Well it is a call to action because I think that you know there's different themes through the book but one of them really is to urge people to take more risk, uh, be willing to fail, be willing to talk about how you fail and why you failed so other people can, can, uh, don't have to follow your footsteps. And then I think, you know, we've talked about all the lessons we've learned um, throughout our, you know, couple of decades of, of working globally. And there's a lot of things we need to do differently. I mean, if we were doing so well, we wouldn't have, you know, a billion people going to bed hungry and three or four billion people that don't have access to clean water and all the other statistics that you hear. And your son, Howard, or, uh, as you refer to as HWB, so I'm just going right with it in the book. You write as well, and you talk in particular uh, in a chapter that really struck me about some aid organizations that intend to do well but sometimes aren't as efficient or sometimes working at cross purposes. Yeah, you know, when you're responding in a disaster situation, sometimes there will be a, a, a lack of coordination because of the nature of how you're responding. But, you know, for us, what we really were able to see was so many examples of people that inspire us and organizations that are doing wonderful work. Our time in Afghanistan together, I mean, all over the world, you see folks who are dedicated to making a change in the world. Warren, people are endlessly fascinated by not only your enormous wealth, but your decision to, instead of spending it on fancy stuff, spending it on the world. Is this kind of what you had in mind when you decided to give I think billions to your, your your children so they would do charitable work. It's worked better than I hoped. I mean, it's been it's just been terrific. Uh, you know, the, the the money does me no good at all. It has no utility to me. It can have enormous utility to people around the world. And fortunately, I have three children who are willing to spend their lives uh, working at that. Do you engage in any luxuries at all? Is there any <laughs> tiny little thing? Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, I've got an interest in a plane, but don't tell oh, me. About okay, it. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. How, what has it been like for you to be given this kind of money to spend in this way? I would think it's entirely thrilling and also kind of overwhelming to well, think it, of the good you could yeah, do. It hasn't really been overwhelming because uh, I mean it's a challenge. I mean you know you have to be responsible about it. But the reason I say it's not overwhelming, the problems are so large. I mean you know I, I travel all the time and and uh, speak to thousands of people around the world, and I have for, for a lot of years, and you just see how many people have so many challenges. So to me, it takes a lot of money. M money is only one part of the equation. I mean, but uh, you know, it does take money to solve problems. So I, you know, uh, I'd take as much as I can get. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, thank you so much, Howie, and also Warren Buffett. Always a good time to see you. Appreciate it. And the book, once again, is called 40 Chances. We have an excerpt on our website, today.com. You want to check it out.